Delaney and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Irish Football Fan TV, it's Phil here. I'm joined with Paul, Steve and uh, Nick. And we, we're going to tell you, I forgot his name, sorry, it's, it's late. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we we're just have college on work today. Brings, yeah. We're gonna move on to Everton. So, Paul, is Nias your saving grace? Oh, we can actually yeah, Everton won a game. Like you talk about, you're allowed to talk about Everton now. This oh, yeah. is just gonna be one video, Paul talking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one thirty minute. You know, video. I've never been I've never been happier for a player that's just been frozen out completely. Martinez brought me in. He froze him out. He said that he wasn't good enough. He trained with the team and they had a wrist injury originally when he first came in. And they weren't playing him because he had this apparent wrist injury they that took lasted. his locker off. Yeah. Out, like. <laughs> it's like, they he bullied him. He, he came back, he didn't get a locker. Did, <laughs> he had to do his, his, his um, aftermath uh, press conference in a, in a tracksuit because they didn't have a suit for him. <laughs> oh they, also, they also changed his, um, his squad number. He originally had a 34 and then they quietly just changed it to 19 to get special per, uh, permission from the... From the league, so there you go. No, he's new that. He's been through. He's been. Yeah, he, he has, yeah. and, he, and 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 that's the, the good thing is is he's been put through the uh, under twenty three team, uh, the reserve team, and he went in there and he worked hard, scored goals. Then he got a long move to Hull, went there, scored goals, came back. Cumin said he didn't fancy him, and then said he's not going to be part of his plans. He almost went to Palace on the last day, the deadline day. Uh, and Nate, you were slagging him, by the way. Oh, boy, God, how much do Palace need him now? Yeah. <laughs> Palace need anybody. <laughs> and then, like, what was it? He... What's Mark Paducah doing? <laughs> <laughs> Get you four or five. So Scott, he, Scott, he went back then scoring goals for the under-23s, right? And then uh, we have no striker. We've got no pace up front. We've got no width. He's bought four or five number 10s and trying to put, like, put them all in there to do a job. Straight away, he makes substitutions. He takes Rooney off, who I'm a big fan of, and I think he's been one of, mm-hmm. one of our best players. Despite what Noel <coughs> says. But anyway, um, he takes them off, brings on the ass. We have a bit of shape about us. Tom Davis, what a player. Comes on. Baller. True ball. Bang. The ass goal. And then he pops up with the winner. Then. And I've never, never been happier for an Everton player to score, but just because... And I'm eating a humble pie. Big time, and I'm delighted to to be doing it, and I and I hope he goes on to to, to have a good season now. Yeah. Um, I do, I don't think he's the answer, but I think he'll do for now. And you know, you never know. He, he could turn out to be just one of these players who just scores goals and nothing else. Or he could score like do what he did, and then just like never score. It could be Yelovich. <laughs> it could be Yelovich yeah. is decent. Score important goals. It's going. Yeah. Goals. Do you yeah. anything to add to that, lads? Um, yeah. Sorry, I just went on a tangent. Um. I think firstly, like the way Everton, it's great that he got two goals and that he's finally playing and everything like that. But I think Everton as a club probably need to look at themselves a little bit at how they treated him. Like that's an unacceptable way to treat just an employee in it's general. Bad, like, it? it's just bad. Like, like, it's, it, was, it was just weird though. It's what's, first, he, what's he done though? That's the other side of it, you know. You want to know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, Martinez never was one to like to fall out with players unless they'd done something bad. You know what I mean? You yeah, know he fell out yeah. with McGeady and a few other players like that, but it was never. They always did something for him to fall out, so you don't mm. know what he was like either. Swear, at, the same, you, at the same time, swear you swear he played for Ireland or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he felt like he fell out with. Um, Martinez fell out with McGeady for no reason. He just fell out with McGeady because I just don't think he fancied. Think he was fell out. That, was, yeah. that was McGeady's side of it. I think he fell out of love with McGeady because McGeady has no end product. But that's just me personally. He's got a plan. What is ten? He so, he so, he signed him knowing that though. <laughs> like at the, at that stage of McGeady's career, you, you knew what you were getting. Like this, <laughs> and he was talking he about to be uh, Maradona. Yeah, he was talking about Maradona. Uh, anyway, <laughs> because we're trying to avoid the fact that Omar Nias, like, got Everton really out of jail on Saturday. Big time, yeah. And uh, um, I'll just... I did, <coughs> I did predict in the preview that we would come from 1-0 yeah. down to win 2 just saying. And uh, if you want any uh, advice for accumulators, talk to you me. did. My advice for accumulators <laughs> is just back Wofford away from home because they're still leaving Chris Bryce's every week. There we go. So, um, <laughs> back by Ladbrokes. Obviously, <laughs> obviously um, Bournemouth are... The, would the alarm bell start ringing now? No, oh, poor Eddie. No, I think he's just, just unlucky. I think I just think they're unlucky. I think I think. Look, did, didn't they win the other week? Uh, he's the, had a few tough, t- tough fixtures. Tough start, yeah. It's tough start. Yeah, it's tough start. Yeah, but some yeah. of a lot of clubs. Yeah. But in terms of like performance, I think they'll. I think they'll stay up. I just think they were just kind of unlucky. Didn't they win last Friday? Yeah, the fall. 
Liverpool scored as well. So yeah, yeah, start yeah, against yeah. again. Brighton. Brighton. And that, that Brighton went out and beat Newcastle. Yeah, so do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's beating yeah. each other. Yeah. I, I have to say, I think people are being really, really soft on Bournemouth. <laughs> And I've been really and I've been really soft on them for a little while now. I, I genuinely don't think they're that good a football team. I think unless Josh King is gonna have another season like he did last year, they're gonna be right in it because they're not good enough at the back. Um and they're not strong enough in midfield either. You can't be going you can't be going into games consistently with Dan Gosling and Andrew Sermon in central midfield. Harry Arthur. Harry Arthur didn't play at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Without Arthur I just don't think they have even with Arthur, Arthur's a good player and he's a Premier League player, but he's not. If he's one of the top players at your club, you're going to be down the relegation battle, I think. Okay. And it's the same if I was getting that, no younger. Yeah, it's the same defence that got them promoted. So a lot of those guys came from kind of League 2, League 1. So yeah, like the, a lot that's the kind of, of standard of defence that they're playing. Well, yeah. Yeah. Back here as well. three, to four, three to four fellas who've played most of the defense, like games and defence from since they came into Premier League in Francis, Cook, and Charlie Daniels were all with them in League 1. Like they're all players who come up through there and were players who were you know, they were all right in League One, they were all right in the championship and they they're okay now but they're probably not good enough in the long term. Do, do you think how we made a mistake not opting to take wheelchair permanently? No. 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 Uh, it was injury record <laughs> I don't think he he, 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 he did. Not with his injury record. It's very, like oh, well, obviously well he, he didn't just, have his injury record, he he he'd be playing for Arsenal, wouldn't yeah, he? Not see him against Doncaster. I think he's it's like not. seeing my son in an Arsenal shirt. I just <laughs> love wheelchair in an Arsenal. <laughs> what are you gonna shirt? say? Nick? No, I, no, I like wheelchair, but again, like he's he's not gonna <clears> solve <throat> that problem. Like I mean, don't think creativity is an issue for them. They're sure. they're, uh, yeah. they're a nice fluid team to watch, but they need more of a solid backbone in in midfield. And don't think wheelchair is gonna give you that. Arthur could, but again, as you said, like he's not that quality. But. Yeah, he's a, like, yeah, he's, yeah. he's a good he's a good decent operator, but that's I'm laughing at the camera. <laughs> that's. At some point, Bournemouth need to stre- strengthen that squad considerably yeah. if they want to really push on. Because but do they, they have just... the money to do that? It's Russian, Russian right. millionaire, isn't it? Russian. Yeah, but yeah. it's very hard when you're getting 12,000 yeah. every week. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Swansea, Watford, anyway. Anything I want I want Steve to talk about this. He, he came <laughs> up yeah, with... you did come up with a good topic in the discussions. Yeah, Marco Silva is the best manager outside of the top six and I include Koeman in that. He's oh, the agree. best manager. Better than Koeman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking up. <laughs> Things are looking up. Um, I, I, Silva's exceptional. He was I would exceptional agree, before he came to England and he did a good... Look at the absolute dumpster fire the whole way. Like last season, <laughs> and how, what do you mean? how yes. and how he need like he nearly got them out of a relegation scrap with that squad, which is an average championship squad at best. Don't call um, David Moyler average. I, I'm not saying David Moyler himself is average. I'm just saying the squad in general. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, he did a brilliant job at Hull, and he's brought in players at Watford who maybe other clubs haven't fancied. Like Nat Chalaba has come in. And he looks a different player. Yeah. He looks a player who can, you know, he's actually on a football pitch now. And that's not something you could have said for Chalaba for too long. Yeah. You know, he's been a bench warmer and bounced around 74 different clubs on loan yeah. in his career. Yeah, he kind of, he, was, he was trying to be a journeyman for yeah. a while. Like. My favourite moment to him is when Harry Arthur runs behind and says, leave it. And he's just like, that was one of the best class. things. He looks like his life had just ended. He yeah. <laughs> <laughs> realised what had happened. The man ever calls in as well, like, he looks a serious yeah. one. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Like, he's just weird. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he's like a he's, championship he manager player. Like. But he wasn't even good, like, there's, Tim Vickery talks about it is the only real English language like Brazilian football correspondent. He lives in Rio. He goes to Brazilian games, and as he said, I didn't see it with Charleston. I didn't see him coming off in Europe whatsoever. He was average enough in Brazil. But Marco Silva sees stuff in these players that no one else really sees, and like they've now gone from Troy Deeney as their main striker to Andre Gray is now there, and Gray is an upgrade on Deeney. And in all the positions where you might have gone, oh, they're all right there at the minute. He's gone, no, actually, we can go one step higher in all of these positions and bring in a better player. Yeah. And he's, he's just bringing in better players as it goes along, and he'll do it again if he's given time. But I don't I don't think he'll be given a lot of time at Watford just by the nature of how they do things. But I also think he'll step up and he'll find a bigger job, whether it's in England and the Premier League needs to keep him because he's one of the best managers out there, or he will go and get a big job somewhere else in Italy or Germany or Spain. 
but he is an exceptional manager who, wherever he has gone, has improved the team that he's been with. Yeah, limited teams as well. You know, yeah, obviously. yeah. But he comes across well. Like he's the kind of guy. You, you, you like when you see him talking in press conference. You want to hear what he has to say. He just yeah. comes across as a nice enough fella, you know. Yeah, he's an open fella, and he's tactically he's outstanding as well. It, obviously, they have the city debacle, but I think City are going to do that to a lot of teams yeah, this yeah. year. Yeah. I just felt like uh, like whoever City went, playing to put it this way, he's not yeah. going to be judged on a City result. No, he's going to be judged on going to Swansea and winning exactly. these games exactly. when maybe they aren't playing so well. 